this entire video is just going to be a whole mess of unanswered questions that I have. So let's go. Oh, hello. This was a really awkward, I'm just going to squat. What will heaven be like? Does heaven exist? Does hell exist? Is Christianity the definitive faith? Are people from other faiths going to hell? Why do I think that God is real? Why am I so convinced? What evidence do I have? Is it just my imagination? I don't think so, but I do have a pretty good imagination. If I'm curious about the Bible right now, can I read my NIV and trust the interpretation? Is that a reliable source? And if the Bible isn't 100% true, then how do I know what to trust? Why did God create the world the way that he did, knowing that a percentage of people would go to hell? And how can I trust finite human beings to transcribe the Bible in original Hebrew without error, and then trust other white people to interpret the Bible in English without error? How can a peaceful, loving atheist supposedly go to hell while an upstanding, racist, homophobic Christian goes to heaven, supposedly. Do they go to heaven? I wouldn't think so, but you never know. I live in the Midwest with a bunch of conservative pastors sprinkled around, and if I talk to them about this, then they pretty much have very strong opinions about everything that I'm questioning, and some might even get offended. Why do Christians seem to pick and choose which Old Testament verses to keep? Homosexuality is wrong, but pork is okay to eat now for some reason. And then whenever I try to ask questions, I'm the cherry picker. How are we supposed to act on love harmoniously when we all have different ideas of love? For example, when we consider the topic of abortion, pro-choice values the life of the mother, pro-life values the life of the baby. They're both two lives. So how do you pick? If Christianity really is the ultimate loving way to live your life, why has it started so many wars? And if hell doesn't exist, what motivation do I have to be in a relationship with God anyway? And can you even call it a relationship if you can't see, hear, smell, touch, be around the person? Or being in this case? Are there gray areas in life? How many are allowed in Christianity? Will I go to heaven if the only reason I'm a Christian is because I'm afraid of going to hell? Why are liberals often accused of following their feelings rather than the facts? Well, when you ask conservatives about their faith in God, their personal testimonial is usually emotional. They usually describe feeling some otherworldly presence defined by emotion rather than logic, fact, and science. Does God even exist? And what's the purpose of life if he doesn't exist? Is there a purpose to life? Is it okay to be moderate and take one day at a time, even when Jesus explicitly said for us to leave all of our earthly possessions behind and follow him? And why am I being made to equate the term liberal with atheist and conservative with Christian when church or state are supposedly supposed to be separated? And what was up with the Old Testament anyway? Why did God wage so many wars? Can we just ignore it? We can preach love and acceptance all we want, but where do you draw the line? When are laws made? Why can't we just know all of the answers to these questions? Why are we being made to guess? Is it okay to go my entire life asking these kind of questions and never knowing the answer? Are all of these questions that I'm asking a product of being privileged? In church, I was always told that people in third world countries would just blindly follow the faith and be really passionate about it. And is this also the reason that Jesus mainly hung out around the marginalized, among the poor and the uneducated? Is it because you just need to have some degree of blind faith? But if God created a universe that is built off of math and science, then why does the Bible seemingly contradict science? What part has Western theology played in the interpretation of the Bible? What if I'm a single mother? What if I don't have time to search for truth in the midst of trying to provide for my kid? How is it fair that she would go to hell? And is that what Jesus meant when he said he wanted someone with a childlike faith? Children are known for asking so many questions. Is it possible? that everything that I've been taught is wrong. Why do Christians feel so threatened and get so angry when I ask these questions? If God didn't want us to ask questions, then why did Jesus answer questions with questions? And why is it considered a big deal today in the church, both politically and spiritually, when it's only approximately mentioned seven times in the Bible, whereas love is mentioned hundreds of times? Why would I believe a tiny handful of Christian scientists 
over the vast majority of non-Christian scientists. I have my blanched bag of fries here. product of this is that I don't want to be told what to think. And I also don't want to be afraid to look at many different viewpoints. I want to read books by atheists, books by Christians, books by Buddhists. I also think that analyzing the Bible without a lens of love is just busy work. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I cut my hair. It doesn't look that bad. I just feel like my face is very round on the bottom. Maybe I'll just get really buff this year and then it'll like find my job I'm gonna go back to the kitchen now, so uh, here I go, back to the kitchen. Jane, go apologize to the cook. 
Gene, buddy, football time. Let the traditions begin. <clears throat> Let's make this quick. All right, I got the ball on the one yard line, and I gotta punch it in. Put it on. Put it Put, 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 put. Ow. Great game, Dad. Hit the showers. But we barely played. Gotta get out there and get more tickets.